OTR style with primetime guests Mike Bossy, Mark Tewksbury, Steve Shutt, and Ken Shamrock. Record primetime special violence and sportsmanship brought to you by the Cake Steakhouse and Bar for great steaks, good friends. See you tonight. Former U.S. President Ronald Reagan once said, Sport is the human activity closest to war that isn't lethal. Today, on this special edition of OTR, we ask, Is the sports field really a battlefield? And if so, how should the soldiers conduct themselves? Hi, everybody. I'm Michael Landsberg. Tonight, we focus on the relationship between violence and sportsmanship. We deal with it daily on OTR. Violence, what are the boundaries, what are the consequences when they are crossed, and sportsmanship, does it even belong in the sports dictionary? Today, we have assembled a highly accomplished and highly intelligent panel to debate the issues. And they come to this set with totally different viewpoints and life's experiences. He was the purest of pure goal scorers. Ten seasons, 573 goals, seven-time All-Star, four-time Stanley Cup champion, Mike Bossy on OTR. Nice to see you, Mike. Nice to see you, Michael. His sprint to the finish in uh, 1992 was one of this country's greatest sporting moments. He touched the wall for gold in Barcelona. He has won Olympic bronze and silver as well, out and out. Mark Tewksbury and off the record. Nice to see you, Mark. Good to see you, Michael. All right. He was one of the first stars in Ultimate Fighting. Tough, charismatic, and dangerous. That's what the WWF saw in him when they signed him. Ken Shamrock, now back fighting for real. And we are thrilled to have him in our ring. Nice to see you, Ken. And he was one of the best players on perhaps the best team of all times. A five-time Stanley Cup winner with the great Canadian teams of the 70s. He, too, is a member of the Hockey Hall of Fame. Steve Shutt on this all-star panel for OTR. Nice to see you, Steve. Michael. Michael. All right, I want to start with a very simple question. Would you hire somebody who had low character but could help your team win? For example, John Rocker. No! <laughs> Who's going to jump? <laughs> if I was the owner of the team, no. Well, if you were the owner of the team, you probably would. If I was the coach and the manager, I would If I was the, manager, I I would the owner of the team, no. Oh. Talking about personal now. If I was the owner of the team, no. Yeah. If I was in a position where I, w where I was... General manager, and it was my first. There are a lot of circumstances. I think it goes in the opposite, though. If you're the owner of the team, you're about money. If you're the manager of the team, you're about winning and keeping your job. So therefore, you would hire somebody. Being the owner of the team, you got to make money. So John Rocker, uh, you know, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna bring him in to make money. If he's gonna throw strikes and he's gonna strike yeah. people out, they're gonna bring him in. Um, players, on the other hand, they don't want to play with guys that are gonna create and get heat on themselves, or or may even have that that kind of well, heat against you themselves. Through, if you go through hist the history of sports and in, in any sport, there are some pretty uh, interesting characters, and not all of them went to bed at uh, 10 o'clock at night, and not all of them uh, said everything uh, that was uh, supposed to be said the, in the right way. But maybe the role of the athlete has shifted over the years. You know, I don't think there's a line anymore. I don't think you can say, well, that's of somebody's private life and that's his public life, and that line has been very much blurred that. with the world of media today. I think what it is, is it's the media. It's not necessary that the athletes have changed, because if you know Babe Ruth, exactly. they bring him in, and then they brought in his life story well, after the yes. media. Uh, absolutely, the media has changed. The media but has it changed go the look of the together. athlete, but you the athlete know, has not changed. Technology is not going to change the athlete, flow of information. Athlete it's has not changed. The athletes are still the same. They still go out and they have parties, and they, they, some of them chase the women. They still build all the things. The thing is now is that we have the website, and we have the net, and we absolutely. have TV, and we have everybody yeah, around. So now actually, everything. players have changed a little bit for the better. Uh, you know, I, I saw it when I was coaching. Uh, you know, the, the four years that I was coaching, you know, guys, very few of them really went out and drank beer like, like we did in the, uh, in the good 70s. Old days, maybe, in the good old days, Yeah, in the good old days. In the good old days. But uh, well, yeah, certainly has been a change. The argument is a little bit, well, it's been around forever, so, so what? It's, it's just been well, no, that's it. I mean, keep it, it. I mean, it wasn't right back then. Exactly. It's, it, because it's year 2000, does it make it right now? I, I don't think so. And how far, you know, like how far do you go? You know, the question is, how far do you go? You know, do you, the guys go out and have a party, but now what's happened, guys are going out and getting shot and, and getting into... Right, but I want to talk about all kinds of things. I think, I think with, with the, ch the example that we talked about, it's about the will to win. Let me read you a quote from Chipper Jones, who plays 
with John Rocker. He said, quote, sure the right thing would have been to walk away. He's talking about his confrontation with the SI writer who wrote the article. But I have not seen John back, John back down from the conflict yet. Isn't that at the heart of what makes a competitor, I ask? Not the fact that he's a nice guy who believes in equality for all, but that he wants to win above anything. Isn't that will to win for John Rocker, that will to walk over everyone in sight, what you want? Well, I, I came out in sports, uh, inside sports a long time ago and said that I was not going to fight. I was not going to drop my gloves and fight. I said, you can knock me down, you can hit me. I said, but I'm not going to drop my gloves and fight. So, and did I have success? I had success. So, where's, you know, where's, where's the, <laughs> I agree, I'm serious, yeah, Mike. Exactly. I mean, exactly. You know what? There's, there's a will to win, but there's also who you are en route to winning that thing. You know, and I think that's equally as important. Okay. I, I really now, do. Is every, if everybody on your team was the same way you were, do you think that the uh, fans would follow it as excitingly as they do today? If they didn't have the fights and they didn't have the confrontations and they didn't have the people that, that would fight back or wouldn't take any guff? Um, let's, let's just face it, okay? No, I agree with you. There yes. are people and there are, a, 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 I say, a majority of people who who go to games and who want to see fights and who, who want to see the high stick. But I think a more relevant but question it doesn't from make it right would have been to you, could you have won those games if you had a full yeah. team of Mike Bossy? Not so much do the fans want to see it, but could the Islanders have won four cups? No one is ever going to get the chance to see if that could happen because it'll never, it'll never come. No, I think you can honestly say. Why not? Because for one is that, you know, if you get, you got people with the same high level skills Part of the reasons, and like I said, I didn't watch hockey back then, is that you had to have somebody knocking people down for you to get the puck in the net. You can't skate around all those I, I people. You had to have teammates. If you had a team of 20 Mike Bosses, you'd have to have a team of 20 Tiger Williams on the other side to take care of every Mike Bossy that was on the ice. You have a team of 20 Mike Bossies would skate circles around hockey. Well, look at it now. You've got uh, guys that uh, play basketball. Let's, 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 let's use an example, okay? Well, yeah, Clark basketball. Side, yeah. Basketball, oh, for instance, you got guys that are playing center who used to be uh, seven foot tall and weigh 160 pounds. Now you got guys like Shaquille O'Neal who are huge. Do you think those same guys could play ball with Shaquille O'Neal? No. All right. On that note, we will go to break. And up next, we will ask, how far have we progressed from the time when the Romans cheered on men slaughtering other men? I think Gladiator is still, by the way, number one at the box office. We are going to ask you the same question that we asked our guests. Results at the end of this show. The first question, as we asked these guys, would you hire a player who could help you win but had a questionable character? And later on in the show, he helped fashion O.J. Simpson's defense. How would he build Marty McSorley's case? One-on-one -on -one with Alan Dershowitz. That's coming up later on this show. Off the record, primetime special, violence and sportsmanship, brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. Steak, order the... And he hits Halter, who's not happy. Here we go again. Here comes Brokale. Here comes Brokale. It was one strike away from being all over. But Jones didn't like it. Brokale didn't like it. And Brokale, the high school linebacker, went flying in there. You know, I'm watching our guests, and the reaction to some extent is like this. No, that's bad. And others are looking with intrigue, with passion. Right, Ken Shamrock? Here's the question that I want to ask, and it relates hey, to hey, violence. <laughs> you call me big guy? Yeah. All right, here's the question. Is violence entertaining or something that detracts from the game's quality? I think it adds to the game. I think there's got to be... Um, People don't go to see cars drive around the track and just race. They like to see the competition of a car bumping another car or teams that work together with cars blocking one team out. Um, the competitive, competitiveness of each team is trying to block each other out and occasionally the, the wreck. They don't want to see anybody obviously get killed or seriously hurt. But it's the bumping and it's the, the, the you know, the, the changing of leads by aggressiveness, not by just... Yeah, by I mean, what's the definition of violence? I don't think that's a very good example. To yeah. have cars, that's strategic, that's strategy. Uh, but They're to me, going I think to any, watch mental people. is violence. Anything that's a thought of, of, of winning through any, mean, any means necessary. So the guy's trying to pass him and he hits the front end of his car and the guy wrecks and he hurts himself. To me, it's, it's the thought process. It's, yeah, that's where the, the fans, violence... I think the fans 
like to see that because they like to see the, fa the passion. Uh, not maybe necessarily, sometimes it gets really ugly, but they would, they want to see the passion in people. And, and that's what sports is all well, about. If, if a car is, is trying to squeeze by another car and, and, and bumps in, okay. But if the car that he's squeezing by turns the steering wheel and, and, and bumps him off the road, I mean, that's ridiculous and that's, and that's violent. You Just know, like in hockey, if someone goes to hit me in the corner, Okay, I expect to get hit, I'm going into the corner. But if someone comes up with their stick in the air or their elbow in the air and tries to hurt me, that's fine. Okay, hey, back up. Ken Shamrock, you're telling me that people like the violence of, of um, car racing because they like the strategy? I, th I, th I think you're bailing out on the issue here. They like the crashes. Absolutely, I think they like the crashes, but also, and now you're talking about uh, probably 70% of the, um, the race fans, okay, especially in the Carolina areas, that uh, understand how, how racing works. And the other 30%, did I get that right? Because I'm not very good with math. But the other 30%. 70 and 30 does yeah, that. Yeah, okay, great. <laughs> then I'm on there, right? Okay. okay. So 70% of them understand how that racing thing works, where you've got two guys that own this, two cars in there, and they're boxing one car out, and the other one's catching the other one's back, and the other one's I, I, I think that 90% of people that go to car races hope that there's going to be an accident, that a car is going to flip over 44 times. They have, they have, uh, I don't think so. I don't believe that. I hope that's, that's not true. true. I don't believe that. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I don't believe that. I'm sure. I'm sure. I actually I'm sure. went with some guys. I actually went with some, 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 some car racing fans. Violent. Violent. But, uh, and these guys, these guys really knew, these guys really knew their sport. And they didn't really want to see an accident. Yeah, but they see, were just watching because you wanted a couple of guys that yeah. had a few beers and they like no. the sport does not mean that no, we can safely crashes. say that, that people don't like crashes. No, they do, but to an extent. I mean, when you see a guy go down there and he's rolled up in a ball of fire and people stand on their feet, man, there's, you know, that's not, that's not excitement to them. Well, well, now, when they run into the wall or the car bangs into the wall, something like that, yeah, that's excitement, okay. you know. But there, there's 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 is, you know, okay, do people want to see that? And I think that what people want to see, I think what sport brings out is it brings out the best and the worst of. I don't know if people necessarily want to see the worst of, I would like to think they like to see the best of. That's why we celebrate the Gretzkys when they retire. That's why we celebrate the legends of games. But I think that, yes, sometimes it does bring out the worst of the people. Best and the it's worst. like an accident, you have, can't help but watch to have it. the best, I think you have to have the worst. The two best known, most famous athletes in the last 30 years are probably Mike Tyson and Michael Jordan. The only way, though, you can have someone like Michael Jordan raise up to the rafters as being the best in everything, the best human being, the best this and that, is to have a Mike Tyson who breaks all the rules. And again, it brought out the passion and everything. Yeah, and, uh, you know, just... It, also, you got to understand, too, is that where, where the sports were before and today is because the media. And the media brings out so much of that in people. I mean, like, for instance, Mike Tyson, I've met Mike Tyson personally, okay? Mike Tyson is a nice person. I've talked to him, he's calm. <laughs> I know, see, and that's, see, and I've met him, if you met him. Well, I mean, if you haven't met him, listen, that's now, I've met the guy personally. Go I've had it. a conversation with him personally, standing right there talking he to the man. Go. And he's very calm. Yeah, and he has a very high voice, and he's, but he's dang, he looks dangerous. <laughs> very calm, he's come up, gave me a hug, said, how you doing? Everything was calm. But the minute someone poses a question to him that he doesn't like, because of where he come from and because of his upbringing, and it doesn't make it right, okay? He doesn't know how to answer to maybe some of the things that other of us are. Pressure, for instance. His pressure when someone comes up and gets in his face is what? To hit. To someone like yourself or yourself is to what? Have a conversation, try and talk your way out of it. But to some of us, we don't know any other way so, but when pressure comes is to defend. But, but so, Ken, are you telling us that, that the, the image that Mike Tyson has as being evil, violent, despicable to many people, is a creation of the media? That because you met him, you know the real Mike Tyson, but all of the rest of us have been duped by the media? No, I think Mike Tyson's definitely, there's a point in time where you, you've got to learn from your mistakes, and he's definitely he's not, not learned uh, from his mistakes. He's easily taunted into situations, and he's easily brought out sitting, if he was sitting here, he would be easily brought out into looking like a bad guy. You could turn him into either a good guy or a bad guy. Well, you know what, Mike TV. Tyson turns himself into what Mike Tyson wants to talk, turn himself into. I mean, you're, you're labeling him a nice guy. I think that... Sure, I'm labeling him as what I know him as, as a person that okay. I talk guys, to. Guys, we've got to take a break. 
but uh, we'll extend this conversation to exactly what you're talking about, which means off the field, what a guy does at home or in the bar, does that relate to sportsmanship at all? And we ask the folks at home to correspond with us regarding the questions that we are asking. As we ask these guests at the top of the block, is violence entertaining or something that distracts or detracts from the quality of the game? Let us know what you think. Off the record, primetime special, violence and sportsmanship, brought to you in part by Kia. It's about time everyone had a well-made car. By Castrol Syntec, the active lubricant. And by JVC, when performance matters. Stevens won the Conn Smythe Award. He was great, but the true most valuable player, many people believe, myself included, was on the Dallas Stars. Ed Belfour's brilliance got the Stars a goal away from going to game number seven. That's the same Belfour two months earlier allegedly kicked, spit, vomited on, and attempt to bribe a police officer who was trying to arrest him. Here's the question. Is what a player does off-field an aspect of sportsmanship. Now, do you think that they didn't give it to him because obviously the journalists vote for that? Do you think that they didn't vote for him because of what he did a couple of months ago? If that's the case, bravo. So you think that if a guy steps over the boundary, away from the rink or away from the playing field, then that should decide what awards he's entitled to and how we look at him? It depends. I mean, if, if Joe Blow would have done what he did, he would have been in jail. He so never would have played this. He never would have played this. You were voting for us. If you were voting for MVP, the Conn Smythe Trophy, and the Dallas Stars had won, would you have considered not voting for Mike? Excuse me, for Ed Belfour because of what he did? Yes. No. Yes, no, I would have. No, I so, totally, uh, yes. totally disagree. Yes, I mean, why, he's, why because he's being voted. Athletes, he's being voted for his performance Steve, on the ice. Why are professional athletes allowed to do things that no one else is allowed to that, do? Why is that? On that particular trophy, it's the playoffs. It's got nothing to do with what he did exactly. two months ago. But it's exactly. his performance. He's a professional athlete. He would never have played in but the he finals. He is a professional athlete. Then he, he shouldn't have won the Lester B. Uh, Pearson Award. Yeah, you know, yeah, that award. Athlete. But the Conn Smythe is, is, is a total, I don't a total agree. different award. It's I interesting. Agree. I can't believe what I agree with you on this one. Because I, I, mean, I understand your point, Mike, but I think that, I guess how I look at it, I would think that we are people that try to embody values. We bring those to sport. So what we do off the ice or rink or, or field or whatever it is, is representative of who we are as an athlete and as a human being, and that should factor in. But when it's a valuable player for a particular series, that, that I don't care. I don't think we're all we're, we're 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 not we're not saying that we condone what he did. No, okay, I, like I don't that's, care that's what a player does off the ice or or whatever. But the player sh the, in no way should stand above the law and get treated any differently than if than if Michael walks out or well, whoever it is and vomits on a on a on a policeman, kicks yeah. a policeman. And, and bribes and tries to bribe a policeman. Why should he, why should a professional The, the, the so-called bribe, well, what, what he, he, he offered to give him a billion dollars? Well, he was <laughs> drunk. You know, he, he offered to give him a billion dollars. That was a bribe. No, smart, like, uh, uh, well, he's smart seriously, answer. now, if it was Bill Gates, it would be considered a serious bribe. <laughs> but, I mean, let's get real here. <laughs> okay, the guy was hammered, okay, you know, and he kicked the policeman. What, he was he was totally or or or, or you're gonna it. say or you're gonna well, say he allegedly okay. kicked the right. policeman because he hasn't been to court yet. Oh. Well, we can say that too. No, All right. Yes, we can. How much does a league have the right to dictate one's private life? We all know the situation with Ray Lewis, the linebacker who was arrested and charged for murder. Eventually, he pled it down and was given one year's probation. Here's a quote from Art Modell, who's the owner of the Ravens, the team that uh, employs Ray Lewis. I'm not exonerating Ray Lewis from being surrounded by the wrong people. That's a judgment he made. And if he comes out of this, which he did, that will change, I promise you. Is Modell out of line to be able to suggest to him who he can hang out with and who he can't? If it affects... <laughs> I think if it if it affects the uh, the NFL and it, to a point if it affects the NFL and affects the players and affects the franchise the, the, the owners if if it affects it that much 
then yes, they do have a say in, in who we can Who's and... Paying them? Who's paying them? Yeah, and, and, it goes, and it goes to the first question we asked tonight, would I... You're, you're both agree. Us, no, you asked us if I... Would I hire uh, John Rocket personally? I wouldn't. If and you were and owner, Odell is saying the same thing, that if he comes back, he's going to have to play the game or, or yeah, play by the, the rules that I want it. That's well, different. So you're talking about a whole different level. We're talking about a different level. a whole different level. It's a different level. No, actually it's not because he yes. didn't kill anyone. It Ray Lewis was exonerated. Well, okay. Those charges were dropped. But you're talking but about Modell is saying you're hanging out with the wrong guys and if you come back, I'm going to tell you who you can hang out with. You fight in the UFC. If I have a contract with you, can I tell you, you know what? I don't like the guys you're hanging out with. Okay, now if I went out with these guys and I raped somebody or they no, raped, no, say no, they no. raped somebody and I got exonerated, they would have that right to come in and say, listen, you're on thin ice here, buddy. Okay, now, if we were to go out and, say, get in a bar fight and several times, and it kept being a problem, but it hasn't been a problem in my performance, then we have a different, totally different situation here, a different level of a, of a, of a problem here, because it's not going to affect... We gotta go to break. I know you guys all want to get in and you'll get your chance. The bottom line is this. The heroes of our culture are simply different than they used to be. When Muhammad Ali was standing over Sonny Liston like this, his face said, we're not going to take it. To a whole generation of people, when Latrell Sprewell choked P.J. Carlissimo, what he was saying was, I'm not going to take it. To a whole generation of people. Up next, violence on the court. Is it really part of the game? And please give us your opinion on this question. Is what a player does off-field an aspect of sportsmanship? Your answers at the end of the show. And back with more OTR, check us out on the Internet to hear what Chris Benoit, Christian, and other WWF stars have to say about hockey fights and tons of other related topics. of snow started when the key comes off the bench. Oh, another hard hit by Geiger. Miller goes at Geiger. That was the strategy, was beat up on Reggie Miller. We have discussed sportsmanship and some of the psychological roots on and off the field of violence. Now I want to focus in on what happens during the game as part of the game. Simple question, is violent play a legitimate strategy? Is it legitimate violence? Or illegal violence. I mean, is it a game plan? If someone goes and locks and says, okay, we're going to go in there and we're going to beat this guy up and keep him out of the game. Like, for instance, Michael Jordan. We're going to try and hurt him. take him out of the game. On Reggie Miller, the video that we just saw, the strategy was beat him up every or, chance or you get. aggressively go after him. Aggressively go after well, him. It doesn't make any difference to me which way you want to well, interpret it. I've played punching 25 and years of my hockey career. Every night was like this. <laughs> every night. I didn't know. And, and more so, a lot more so in junior than in pros, but when I played junior hockey, I didn't know if I was going to finish the game. Any, every game I played. But that was part of hockey. That was, game, that was the game plan. It will hit Mike Bossy. He, he doesn't like getting hit. Right. Well, so I'm sitting there to my, thinking to myself, well, who the heck does like getting hit? <laughs> so, Mike, what if, you're, what if you're a hitter and your coach says to you, okay, you go out there and you, you kill this guy tonight? What do no, you do as they a don't player? say that. No, 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 they will say, look, you've got to finish off your plays with them. You know, this guy's a talented player. Every chance you get, we've got to finish him off. No, but Steve, does it make any difference if you say it the way Mark says it? Yes, or you say it the yes. Way? Yes. No, it does. Yes, it sure does. does. Yes, it does. Oh, because you're playing oh, yes, within the rules. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. It depends who you're saying it to. If someone comes, as Coach Al Arbor comes in addressing him and says, Mike, you've got to finish your checks tonight, okay? That's one thing. If he goes to Clark Gillies or to Bob Nystrom and says, you got to finish your checks tonight. Yeah, but it's that's fine. Completely different. Yeah, but they're still uh, finishing their checks. Well, it doesn't still matter. within the rules of the game. Yes, yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's like a football player he banging his head against the uh, the locker room, saying, "I'm going to kill this guy. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him." And he goes out there and he rips. And he goes and he knocks the guy. Out. And I'm like, let's, let's face it. Does he really mean he's going to kill him? Oh, he means he's just going to drive the guy into the dirt. He's going to try and take him out of the game. Hey, that's sports, boys. That's the way it is. We you go out there. You go out there to win, and you play hard. And some some players are skilled, and some players are skilled and very aggressive. If it's done within the rules, I have absolutely no problem with it. But how, what, what are the rules? 
The Is rules it? are in black and white in a uh, book in every that's not true. Yeah, but that's not true interpretation, that's, though. How right? can you say that's not because, true? Because, let's face it, Maybe it's just like... Maybe in your sport you don't have. Uh, do you have rules in yours? Yes, yes, we do. But like I said, there, it's a very fine line. There's the no rules, fine line. The rules... The There's rules. no fine okay, line. Okay, so you tell me the black difference... Black and white. You tell me the difference between... I watch basketball a lot, and I see and I see, I see the guy get called for a foul, and I see three guys do it prior to him that don't get called for it. Well, so that's tell because me the there's no line consistency. Is. It's not well, a fine line. It's, 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 there's it, no consistency. I disagree. I think, I think there's, there, there's basically the foundations, just like the law and everything else is, it's, it's being broadened and widened, and getting, being, being able to get away with a little bit more and a little bit more, and getting a little more aggressive. Does that mean that it's right? Uh, does it? <laughs> is it wrong? Asked, is it right? Well, it's... <laughs> Are they, are they, I mean, who? The answer is obvious. I mean, if it's, what, if it's what black and white in, in, in the rule book and it's not interpreted that way, then someone's wrong. Well, this is why you have referees and referees. The one thing that referees are told right now is keep the, the flow going. It's an entertainment sport. Yes. That's what they're looking at. The league is the league is telling them that. Well, this is the whole thing. You've just nailed it. If you go it's in entertainment there, entertainment sport, and that's I mean, this is what if it wasn't enter to. if it wasn't entertaining, then you wouldn't make the money, and then the people wouldn't pay the tickets, and that's why. What the hell am I doing here? I'm an amateur sport. It's a whole different set of values and ethics and the whole bloody thing. I mean, it really is. Right. It's yeah. The way you guys are talking. I mean, where I come from, the name of the game is be the best you can be. Not at the expense of other people. I mean, it really is a different... Come on. No, listen. Oh, no. Come on. Oh, yeah, I'm going to dive in and pull your foot so that I can... You know, <laughs> I'm pass to the water. That's fine. That stuff doesn't happen. It goes prior to even getting well, that's in why the they have lanes. It goes prior to even getting <laughs> in the water. It goes before that. It goes for practice. How about your, 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 the people you compete against in your own country? You I know mean, what? There's an inherent respect in that ready. We sit with seven guys before we go out to race an Olympic competition, 30 minutes, looking at each other. No one's going, yeah, I'm gonna kill you, I get out there. You know, it's respect. Yours a contact sport. I mean, are you out there willing to win? At, at whatever you gotta do to win, would you, would you do that? Absolutely not, because that would mean in my sport, Would I you push clubs. the lines? No. Would you play do the I lines? Do I inject steroids in my body to no, be the best? No, but, but, but does the media press for it? Does, do, do they push the lines? Do you push? Would you push the lines to be the best you can be? No, you're trying, would you? to, you're trying to say that the media is dictating how people, how I people exactly, perform. I exactly say that well, because that's, that's the bull oh. money dictates. And media is doing. money. No. Media is money. Media is money. You have to understand. Well, no, we'll go to break. Anytime you talk about media money, you got to go to break. <laughs> Slam anyone else if you want. Let us know what you think of the questions and the issues we ask this question. Is violent play a legitimate strategy? Let us know. You can see our address and we'll give you your answers at the end of the show. Back with more OTR. Off the record, primetime special, violence and sportsmanship. Brought to you in part by Castrol Syntec, the active lubricant. By JVC, when performance matters. And by Kia, it's about time everyone had a well-made car. Hey, how did... Yep. All right, I gotta throw it up quickly because these guys won again. There are a few things more revered about hockey than a good scrap. But with the game trying to crack the American market, that has come under some scrutiny. Oh, if come, Americans love the fights in hockey. I was, yes, and they are trying to push <laughs> hockey. The land of the violence. WWF, come on. The, the, I watched a promo on ABC when they had the hockey on ABC the other night, and they promoted the hockey with high sticking and bashing everybody into the boards. That's what they want. The, ho the National Hockey League is, is going to look exactly like the WWF in two, three years from now. Well, exactly. What's, what's the league in, in Quebec going on right The senior league? The the senior they call league. it the fight league now? Yeah. And they got all the guys, you know, and, they, and the guys get paid, you know, like $50 a game, but they also get $50 a fight. And they're like and, four and, five and guys on every team that fight with each other. You cannot they? get a ticket. Sold out, you huh? cannot get a ticket, and, and and for years and years and years, senior hockey, you, I mean, the the teams were dying. Huh. The reality is, let's face it, it's that's part the reality. Of it. it is absolutely, <laughs> it's a part of it. But you know, you, you use the analogy to the movie The Gladiator earlier. Well, there was a moment in The Gladiator at the end of the movie, where society went so far, the gladiator stood and said, "Look, is this what we've come to?" Is this really what it's about? And society had to look at itself again to be reflected. And one maybe day, that's where all this is going. Our society will look at itself. And I say, sure hope what so. Are, what are we making 
of, of everything that we're looking up to. I think the purity of sport, you know, where it started, the nobility of it, the, the people against people in a place so where you go, oh, let me finish for one second, please, where, where you actually one. could okay, compete now. within <laughs> rules, etc has become so impacted by the business side, by the money side. You cannot pull it out anymore. We're going to talk about sportsmanship and violence because they're on two ends of the spectrum, and they both represent very different values, and those have com become completely blurred in the sport environment we live about in. about the movie The Gladiator. Did people actually realize that they have come to a point where we have we gone too far? Yes. You're wrong, because that's not what it was about. It was about the guy dying and how he died. He died a gladiator. He died by what he believed in. It didn't have nothing to do with those people. These people love this man for what? Have you seen the movie? Yes, I have. Okay. The people love this man for what? Why did they love him? Yeah. Why did they love him? Because he stood by what he believed in, and he died for what he believed in. Yes, and he didn't believe in the violence. Oh. That was the whole point. You're he wrong. didn't he, believe in okay, the violence. He was a gladiator. gladiator. He was a leader of a warrior. He was a leader of a nation who fought, who brought, brought nations brought an Sistle army against Ebert. nations Filling to the fight void against each other. Sistle and Ebert. But there was a purpose. <laughs> and Shamrock. <laughs> there was, there was a and I, by the way, I see, give it one of the best movies ever. I, so yeah. You nailed it, though. Listen, it wasn't was arbitrary. Was it a thumbs up or a thumbs down? It, it, wasn't, thumbs it wasn't arbitrary <laughs> Two violence. Thumbs. The violence served a purpose, was to defend exactly. your country. Exactly. It wasn't violence for entertainment's so sake, which is what sport has become. Uh, but it's still a purpose. Okay, Mark, I've got to ask you this. You, you say that, you know, how far will we go and how much will we lose our values and how much will money govern sport? If violence and fighting and that whole nature is what people want, what's wrong with it? Who are you to dictate what people should like and dislike and who are you to say what's appropriate and inappropriate? If people like it, what's wrong with giving it to them? No, who am I? No, you're quite right. I mean, <laughs> I, I, you're quite right. I, obviously, you know, for everything that happens, there's going to be people that are counterculture, and perhaps I am just simply counterculture, but I don't buy into that. All right. I think you've got wrong with him being against it. There's nothing no, wrong with me not. being against it. There's nothing wrong with him being for it. If that's what people want, well, see, I'm not. I'm not saying. Hey, I don't care. It depends right. on the type of violence, though. So you guys for it or against it? I'm. I'm talking about types of violence. So, okay. I mean, I'm definitely not Let me for take a time violent. Again. Violent. You and Ebert will get back to, uh, to this in a second. <laughs> uh, when we return, we're going to talk about the law. Does it belong on the ice, in the field, in the ring, if you cross a certain line? And where is that line? We'll talk to Alan Dershowitz about that when we return. Right now, the question we asked at the start of this block, is hockey fighting really part of the game? I don't think I ever got the words out of my mouth before you guys jumped in, which is exactly what we want. Back with more OTR in a moment. to off the record this primetime special and the question that stems from that of course is does the law belong on the ice or the playing field and to help address that we welcome to off the record one of the best known names in the field of law as it relates to pro sports alan dershowitz joins us mr dershowitz first of all thanks for joining us on otr it's my pleasure thank you the first question that i think is very relevant to us is something that sports organizations claim all the time they say that they can effectively police and regulate themselves that they will implement their justice in their way. Do you agree with that? If it's true, it's the most damning praise imaginable because it means that hockey is then making a decision not to enforce uh, anti-violence policies. If in fact they can do it and they don't, if what we're seeing on the ice today is a reflection of the National Hockey League's tolerance of violence, it's the worst condemnation imaginable. I would hope that they would at least have the excuse of saying maybe they can't uh, enforce their policies as well as they'd like to. Really what it comes down to is what's permissible 
and what's allowable and what above a certain level should you be charged for? Where do you draw the line really is the question. Is it strictly arbitrary or is there a hard, fast place where that line should be drawn? Well, I know at least some lines that can be drawn. Uh, you have to draw a line that says no violence will be tolerated if it's not an effort to win the immediate game. The McSorley case, the game was over. It was out of reach. There were a few seconds to go in the game, and a hit like that had nothing to do with hockey. It had to do with violence. Uh, throwing a baseball at somebody in the on-deck circle, uh, jumping into the stands and attacking a fan has nothing to do with the sport. So I think that's one line. But can I interrupt you for a second and say this? While you may look at it that there are hockey fans or baseball fans who would certainly disagree with you, they would say that the hit with the score out of reach late in the game does still relate, maybe not to the winning of that game, but the winning of future games. And a pitcher throwing in a batter late in the game when the game is out of reach may not relate to that game, but relate to future games. It all still can potentially, depending on how you look at it, still relate to winning and losing. I agree with you, but that's a line at least we can draw. The line between winning this game and perhaps having an intimidating effect on the player in future games. That's a line. We can draw that line. It shouldn't be drawn by the courts because the courts have no expertise in deciding where to draw the line. The usual rules of assault and battery obviously can't apply to hockey or, or boxing or even basketball uh, these days. But I think the leagues which know their sports, know their athletes, and by the way, can control their athletes because suspension from professional sports is a death sentence. And uh, they can really enforce it if they choose to. That's the place to draw the lines first. They're very difficult to draw, and they have to be drawn in advance. They can't give a lot of discretion after the fact because you have the problem of the home team advantage. I mean, wouldn't McSorley have been prosecuted had that violence occurred in Boston rather than in Vancouver? Who knows? In another facet of your life, you do provide defense, normally upon appeal. If you were defending Marty McSorley, would you employ the assumed risk defense, suggesting that Donald Brashear, by consenting to play in the National Hockey League and signing a contract to play in the NHL and putting on the uniform, had to assume some risk? Well, that's more of a defense in a civil or a tort case than it is in a criminal case, although obviously it has relevance in a criminal case as well. Yes, I would raise that defense. I would also raise the defense of standardlessness. We just don't have standards. You can't have a law that says anybody who has unnecessary or unwarranted violence will go to jail. You have to have standards. You have to have lines. You have to have rules. I think we could draw a proper rule which would make McSorley's Act criminal, but we haven't done it yet. So I think he will and should be acquitted if the case ever does come to trial. Alan Dershowitz, this was a real pleasure and an honor. Thanks for joining us today on OTR. My pleasure. Thank you. Well, Mike Boss, you're shaking your head already regarding the comments uh, made by Alan Dershowitz. Well, he's, he's basically saying if the score's 3-2, you can hit someone t on the side of the head. If it's 5-2, then, well, you're not allowed to do that. That's where you draw the line. I mean, how, how... It doesn't make any sense to have an educated lawyer say something like that in my opinion. So well, it does make sense, but it's it sad the sense that Okay, so let's, let's take I it to mean, the 3-2 game. Okay. Right there. Well, okay, that's his opinion. I want to hear your opinion. Does the law belong in the ice or on the court or in the ring for something that someone would call extreme violence? Is there any place at all? I say no uh, on one hand, but on the other hand, I also know that all of the leagues do not uh, govern uh, the sport the way that they should. I mean, they've got to be a lot tougher and a lot stronger, knowing, and, and players know that, okay, geez, if, if I do this, even if I lose my, you know. Uh, You're right, I, Steve, but they're not doing it. And you know why? This is, the it, so this is the biggest problem of all, is, is all of the sports are not governing So it. what is it going to take for them to, to them to do it? We've seen the worst that can happen, we, we, or, or we might even see. And Somebody's going to die, and it's still not, it's still not going to change. After the Brashear incident, we saw it again Niedermeyer. with Niedermeyer. Niedermeyer, yeah. And, and then we saw it with uh, Claude Lemieux, who, who conked someone yeah. on the back of the head and, and behind the net. Yarmar Yager did it, too. Yeah. And then you see it in the playoffs. All of the leagues. All of, it's not only hockey. It's all of the oh, leagues right. do not okay. govern let, themselves. Let me jump in, because I want to pursue that. But first of all, do you believe that the law, in, in the case of, say, McSorley, or anything else that fits that category, belongs? I believe that if no one's going to do anything about it, then the law has to come in and do something about it. 
because there, there's going to come a time when players that played the, the way that I played and played the way that Gretzky played and that played the way that Mario Lemieux played won't want to play hockey and they won't be able to play hockey anymore. Mike Bonanno's talking Steve. about that already. Yeah. You know, he saw the, the league of Bonanno Bonanno come to get a lot stronger. Year. You know, I agree with that. I, I'm not too sure if, 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 uh, if the police have to get involved there, but the league definitely well, is going to clean up the biggest up their problem own and the biggest stumbling blocks to having a league say, okay, you know what? You hit a guy over the head, you're gone for a year. Isn't that the biggest problem? The unions that will not allow the league to have that kind of penalty. As soon as a guy gets fined or suspended, the union says, grievance, uh, you know, we want you right. to reduce that. That's you're intolerable. Right. Then so let that go to court. So who has to come in and, and, and take control? Somebody has to, because they're not taking control. If they wanted to take control, they'd come in next year, they'd make a videotape an hour long, sit down every team in front of it and say, okay, guys, that's it. There's no more of this, and this year, that's it. You do They've this, done that. you're out. Remember, remember... They never did it when I was there. Oh, yeah. I remember never that. did it. They no came in there and showed me well, a video Well, this is what we're going to call. Well, yeah. We're going to call this. We're going to call that. They talked about and it. And it goes for about uh, a month, and then after that, it just goes... Yeah, well, well, there's there's de there definitely has to be, uh, in, in some sense, I believe, in, 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 in bringing in the law. If, for instance, that, sh that, that stick that I saw was... Uh, I mean, you're talking about, uh, this is a sport where checking and hard hitting is okay. Okay, it's already violent enough mm -hmm. to where you don't need sticks going in across people's throats. And if nothing is done severe enough about that, maybe not the first time, okay, the law doesn't step in on this one. But, okay, now you're seeing series of actions happening along the same lines. Now somebody has to step in and take, say, hey, that's enough. But you, you, don't play hockey, you don't play hockey and expect to get hit on the side of the head with a hockey stick. You, you go into a ring, and you know darn well that someone could smack you on the side of the head, and you could be dead in, in, in an hour, okay? Because that's the nature of the thing that you that's want right. to. That's what I expect. And that's, well, you and don't that's expect, it. expect to get hit by a chair. Uh, that's, but, but that, that doesn't well, necessarily... I mean, if I'm, I'm talking around. about the ultimate fight yeah. and, and the, the wrestling. I mean, that's part yeah. of the show that they put right. on. No, but, but that's part of hoc the... Hockey's one sport. Well, Mike, you did say sport. that you, you did expect this. You may not like it, but you used to say, I didn't know if I was going to finish the game. So, so you did enter into hockey. You were saying you were playing junior. You didn't know if you could finish a game. Right. Well, it, yeah, but it was more of the, of the jumping on and the fighting back then than expecting someone to come up and hit me on the side of the head. Okay, the well, this is an example, for instance, in... Uh, in a, uh, a UWF fight over in Japan one time, with his, which is the type of fighting, the old part, but fight of fighting that I did way back when, a fighter was down on all fours and was getting a count. One, two, the other fighter came up and kicked him in the face. I mean, just walked up and kicked him right in the face, knocked the guy out. He was disqualified, but still, he became the media attention. He would was, you have charged him for doing that? Uh, no, I would, I, I would have definitely kicked him out of the sport definitely right. kicked him out of the sport, but as far as any was it criminal, no. Okay, we got to go to break. <laughs> Fabulous show today with four terrific guests. We'll be back to talk more, and we ask you the questions that we've been asking them. Uh, thank you for your response. We're getting tons of response throughout this show. Does the law belong in the field of play? We'll have the results when OTR returns. Off the record, primetime special, violence and sportsmanship, brought to you in part by JVC, when performance matters. By Kia, it's about time everyone had a well-made car. And by Castrol Syntec, the active lubricant. Injured. This is what we do Monday to Friday and off the record. We throw out the issues and let great guests debate them. We also want to know what you think. We uh, asked you at the beginning of the show to correspond with us. Here are your results to the questions we asked. Find out what you guys are up to. Mike Bossy? 
Well, yes, I'm still director of public relations in Quebec for Humpty Dumpty Potato Chips. I opened a restaurant in Montreal, Mike Bossy's, and I work with uh, GM and Chevrolet with the Safe and Fun hockey program for six to nine-year-olds. You've always been for Safe and Fun stuff. You're probably yes, mad that sir. someone pushed Humpty Dumpty off the big wall. Yes, <laughs> I'm still looking Ken, for it. what's him. up with you? Oh, well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uh, right now training for a fight, and we're still negotiating. And um, if you need any information on that, you can get that on uh, www.kenshamrock.com. Mark Tewksbury. Life after swimming, you haven't swam in eight years, right? No, I haven't. Squeeze Juice Bar opening King Street in Toronto in August. Right. And uh, my passion, though, is oath. We'll be at the Olympics talking about ethics and values, really holding true to those things. Steve Shutt, you building rinks? Sure are. We Name of the company? Finished, uh, Simcoe Refrigeration. Just finished uh, Columbus. New rink in Columbus. Uh, NHL, Minnesota. And uh, we're just going down to Dallas to do their new building. Guys, I have to say this was indeed a pleasure for bright guys. You throw out the topics, and you get the passion, and you let the folks at home decide who's right and who's wrong. That's what we do every day on OTR. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Off the record, primetime special, violence and sportsmanship, brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. Michael Landsberg's clothing, courtesy for you. You're like poison ready to go, Bossy. <laughs> From Sydney, Australia in 2000, this